a reading of the New Testament as uh, translated uh, or transferred from the King James Version of the Holy Bible to the Gullah culture. This is the Gullah Bible. And as usual, we uh, pick any spot that we wish that, well, we pick any spot. We just go to it. Well, let's stay in Luke. We was in Luke another day, I think. Uh, so let's go to Luke, page 201. Uh -oh. <clears throat> I have to put the glasses on because uh, the way the Bible is, you have the Gullah. Uh, you have the Gullah on one side. But then in smaller type, you have the, uh, you know, the all English, the uh, Marlowe Shakespeare type of English, you know, King James Version English of, uh, of things. So let's go to page 201. If we pick anything we wish. Let's go to page, I mean, not page two, uh, uh, 201, 42. Out of Luke 2. When Jedus be in the tomb, yeah, he gone long with um to the Passover fleas, like all the Israel people finna do. And the translation. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Okay, once again, we usually read this uh, twice. In fact, uh, let me just take this opportunity. We do uh, this reading of the uh, the Gullah Bible in the uh, Gullah language, well, the Gullah language, the Gullah Bible is in the Gullah language, um, every morning. Uh, this happens to be a Sunday morning, so I've taken to every Sunday morning to take a little bit before I do the second reading. We do it twice um, to just explain uh, what's happening. <laughs> and what happens is uh, uh, I, on my maternal side, my uh, great grandfather, my great, 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 yeah, great. You know, my great, yeah, great grandfather uh, was uh, Gullah Geechee. My great grandmother was um, a full blood of Mohawk Indian, Indian, and and because of that, I have some sort of affinity towards uh, Gullah people. Um, uh, so what I I wanted to do with what I do, I said, well, what what was it like when he was just freed from slavery? You know, from the you know the system of slavery, and he's out there with nothing. You don't know nothing. <laughs> and so what you would what you what they would do because the only book that was really available or readily available uh was the holy bible from you know uh, from that's what everybody sort of had that so they learned how to read and write from that from that bible and it, it hence the language the way it is but i wanted to say well if i was in that same position what would it be like learning or trying to read a new language something you don't know about so i wanted to put myself through this process with the uh, with the gullah language and it's it's fascinating you know uh, because I'm only doing it for about a month and a half, whatever I just, but I'm going to keep on going. Every, you know, with every morning, every day, um, uh, that's what I do. Um, so so that, that's what I do. It's, and it's, like I said, it's a fascinating uh, process. You know, your head gets adjusted a certain way. Now, here's the other thing. Most people, most people, they don't want to make mistakes. Now, to learn something new, you're going to make a lot of mistakes to develop it. And most people certainly are not going to have the patience for weeks and months at a time they're, they're sounding, uh, as they say, ignorant. <laughs> but it's, they sound ignorant because that's what the, they say when you learn. You know, you accept it in a baby because you go, well, yeah, yeah, what's he saying? Or you're trying to learn. But you won't do it with an adult. Okay, so that's it. That's it with that. Oh, I should, uh, let me do the second reading now that I'm going to explain about the set. That way you can bill it any time you want, right? So we're reading uh, from Luke 2, uh, page 201. And this is uh, 42. When Jedus been in a tomb, yea, he gone long with um, to the Passover fleas, like all the Israel people been a do. And the uh, translation is, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Okay, so that's the reading for this morning. Now, let me just, uh, oh, it's a Sunday, so every, as I, I really, obviously I read this every every day, but on Sundays I just take a little bit of time um, to explain. I'm moving around all the time, right? Like, this is the this is the Sunday I'm here. 
Uh, next Sunday, I'll be in Virginia. Uh, and uh, But every time I go someplace, I, I set up a set. A, a, you know, I decorate a set. And this is the set from here. I'm right now in Brooklyn. And here on this side, you have uh, um, my last name. My last name, inter interestingly enough, translates to warrior. Just the Anglo meaning. Just saying, right? Um, the flag that you see hanging up there, that's the... Uh, uh, What's his name? Was it David Hammonds? Anyway, I have to look it up. I have to write something on that. Uh, is he's an American artist and a, a black artist? That and I've got to look up his heritage too. Who, uh, uh, for an art exhibit, made this? Because uh, you know you have the Black Liberation flag, red, black, and green, green that c comes out of the Marcus Garvey movement, and is generally acknowledged as um, the uh, a Pan African flag, a, you know, a Pan African flag. This is specifically. Uh, an African American, if you want, in case you say, Black American. They went through the slave experience, um, and that's that that flag. And I, I really like that flag, and I have several copies all over. In fact, in Virginia, where you'll where I'll be, you you'll hear next to me. I have a really big one, right? Um, on this side here, oh my, oh, uh, this is a a uh, photo that was taken of me. Um, uh, I'm not going to explain it. Explain some of but anyway, it's a it's a it's a photo that I have, and I put it on several T-shirts, um, and it says it says what well, it says. We got to save black people. The history of this is that uh, I used to be uh, the uh, what's called the arts director of WBAI Radio, the really big community radio station, the real community, listen to sponsored real community, not no like, stations, not no public radio, it's not no commercial radio, and. Um, when, and you know we had we do very political, but you know I was arts director. We we get still. Uh, I was part of being arts director. I was in charge of the the, the film critics. You know, um, things in arts like film like 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 there we go like uh, the art critics, the dance critics, you know, the theater critics like that. And uh, of course the the DJs. Like I used to travel. It was very funny. People say I say I'm in radio. Too. Oh, are you a DJ? I said no. I'm in charge of the DJs. That would throw them off. Anyway. And so I would, uh, and as music director, then I would get CDs all the time, all the, you know, and one of, and one of the CDs I, um, uh, I got, uh, the, I guess it's a new group, they had a uh, t-shirt that said this, we got to save black people, and then if you see, there's a, I guess there's simple, you can't see it because of the, 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 the gate that I'm behind, like, there's a cross over it, but it's actually a gun, a hand with a gun. She can't really see it like that, like that. And so I set this picture up. I was traveling. I was actually, I was in Puerto Angel in, uh, in, in the west coast of Mexico. And it's like a bus thing happening. And the Haitian, there was a whole thing with the Haitians, both people. This is in the 90s happening. So I knew, uh, I always carried, uh, back then had camera. It wasn't no cell phones. And uh, well, it was cell phones, but not like that. Very little. Maybe those brick phones. Um. And so I had this guy, you know, this Mexican guy. I said he was. It was like he was down there. I gave my camera and I came up to where this was. It was like a. I don't say construction there, but it's like a just an empty a space. And I had him take the picture. I knew because I was on the because I knew the fence. I knew about the fence. So I was this, this is like in solidarity of the boat people, the Haitian boat people in the early nineties. But I didn't know that that the thing would be perfectly the thing was like basically you got to save black people now. Some people will do it with guns, with, with weaponry, you know what I mean? But my whole thing, in my head, I'm going like, eh, you don't have to use that, not in the modern day. You use to to do that, right? Okay, um, enough on that. Over here you have, um, I have, I, 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 I say, um, I live in South Africa, but I, uh, I shouldn't say, I, well, I identify with West Africa. That's where my peoples, you know, my heritage, my Lineage comes from, so I know that because I was at Gory Island, and believe me, I was almost, yeah, my ancestors sort of like, I was, I was possessed in Gory Island, let's put it that way, I was saved by some, well, some Africans, some Senegalese young ladies, you know, a couple of them, because it it's a long story, but I stayed someplace else. But, but I saw, I saw the West Africa, you know, yeah, I even seen people that look just like me. Um, but I'm, and lately I got this, there's a symbol like that, the symbol looks like this. And the translation, the English translation, is called a wisdom knot. So I'm going to use that as my symbol. symbol but it's come from the West African tradition. I think it's just the Afghan language. And, uh, and so the, it reads like we'll have the translation there. 
but the word is a uh, yansapo. Now I say yan, I say yansapo only because usually, well, at least in South Africa, you really never you don't pronounce the first like it's an N or something like that or the M. You don't really pronounce it. You still put an emphasis on the on the next letter. So I don't know how to a Khan say it, but I look at it and I say, oh, it looks like uh, yansapo to me. Sooner or later, I'll talk to somebody from the Akan, you know, culture and I'll find out how to really say that. So that that's part of that set. And then, of course, uh, I have now I've had this hat for a long time. Everybody thinks it's a um, everybody thinks it's, you know, the, the whole Cuban revolution thing like that. But this is what I call my Ogun to about West African culture. This is what I call my Ogun cap, because on one side, this uh, side is black. If you it reverses, it reverses. And the other side is green. You see? And then the star, which they take to mean, I guess, the communist star, something like that, a Cuban star, somebody's star. But that star is a little bit of red. So in the archon, in the um archon, in the um uh, Yoruba culture, uh, I'm a child of Ogun. Ogun's colors in your in, in Nigeria, the, the birthplace of the Yoruba culture, and now I got to get this straight on. I think it's blue. Uh, uh, but when the, when the religion traveled to um, Brazil, it became, well, it's called Condemble, and I think their colors are blue and white for, for I'm talking about for Ogun, right? Um, or, or could be reversed. But when the, when, when the, when the uh, culture, when the Yoruba culture traveled up to, through Cuba to come to North America, the color for some reason changed to, uh, changed to green, black with a bit of red, right? And so when I wear this, when you see me wearing this, I'm sort of in my Ogun mode because I'm a child of Ogun, right? See, warrior, um, uh, wisdom, I'm talking Ogun, but don't worry about it, that's, that's something else. Uh, so when I'm wearing this, I, it's like my Ogun crown, if you will, like that. Uh, most people don't know it, which is really good. And usually, I, I, so uh, I'm saying, I just developed this style here just when I'm reading uh, when I'm reading the uh, from the from the uh, from the Gullah from the from the Gullah Bible uh, because it looks what we call ecumenical. I don't know. That's the way it comes to me, right? So so that's what I do. Uh, but usually, if I'm wearing this out, I just wear it like like this warrior. Or I I, I used to I like to wear it like this. This sometimes I probably wear it. I haven't worn it like this in a long time. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe today I wear it. I wear it like that. I'll see what happens. Um, so, so that, that's what it is. So every, every morning I read from the color Bible, but it, uh, on, on Sundays, um, I do morning reading, but then, um, no, no, this is like, I, I was, I would say the Western scripture, if you will. And, you know, yeah, Western scripture, but every Sunday evening I post, sorry, I post from my book of scripture. I have my book. Well, I have not my book of scripture. I post from the. This book right here, this is the United Independent Compensatory Co-System Concept. It's a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy. So I read from this, and I post every Sunday, usually in the evening, like 9 o'clock, something like that. This is by Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. This is the original cover for the original book. The original book actually has a bigger format, right? But they republished this with the exact same way that the original, original book. Now, I have the original book. In fact, it's in South Africa. It's been bound uh, by Lovedale Press. You have to look at that. Lovedale Press was the, 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 the press, the, the revolutionary press that gathered all the material for the for the struggle back in the apartheid days, right? But I had it bound there and it was signed Lovedale Press. And so that's a bigger book. So when I'm down in South Africa, I read from that book, which is the original one. There's a revised edition, a new uh, revised edition that they that they that they have um, revised in uh, 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, 2000, I think it's 2016. I have that book too, and I usually read out of that when I'm down in um, in Virginia. And also, there's a word guy which I haven't read from. Sooner or later, I got. I think I have a word guy in South Africa. I'm sure. I'm not sure. So that's the whole thing. So I now explained everything. On a Sunday morning, I have to do it every Sunday morning, explain what they did, 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 and I'll be posting later for this. And that's a, well, that's about it from me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.